All right, welcome back team. We're doing another YouTube video this week. Once again, we're diving in from a different angle. I'm here with Will this week from Nexus Performance. Recently, for those of you who are up to date, one of the most recent podcasts. And we're gonna be going through some of the movements in the squat. I asked Will, hey, can you have a little look at these movements? Because I really want to improve it. There might be something there, there might be not. I'm sure we're gonna learn something. But I thought, hey, why don't we get it on to a YouTube? episode for you guys because perhaps you can read between the lines and take away some value too. So we've got the boat going, we've got the dogs upstairs, we've had the metal going um, and we're about to get into it mate. So what's the plan of attack bro? Well yeah contextually I am Powerlifter. I do squat bench deadlift for max weight to get white lights on the platform. It's going to be a little bit different for you being a bodybuilder, the growth mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. as the main goal, but uh, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of find that middle ground for you and see if we can fix up a little bit of technique stuff that'll help you still. For sure. So if we can just get you out of pain and allow you to do a lot of volume, that's the goal. That's what we want. That's it. That's it. And I think there's, there's always room for improvement. Always. You know, and like I might be picking up trying to pick or create problems that aren't there, but I, I do believe there'll be some things that perhaps need to be improved. Maybe there's a lot of things, but either way, it's gonna be a good learning experience. I'm, I'm sure you're right. I'm pretty amped. Well, what, what better way to learn from the people who move the largest weights in the world? Yeah. Seems simple. All right, let's get into it. What's first on the agenda? We'll hit the squat. We'll hit the squat. We'll just, um, what we'll do is we'll just, we'll just see how you squat. Yeah, let's have a look at it. Like, like there are a few standard warm-ups that I'll take people through usually. Like just uh, because, well, bodybuilders, powerlifters, we all kind of fall into the same buckets a lot of the time in terms of things that go wrong. But, but we'll just see how you get on, how, how you go on the bar, just do a few squats, see how it feels. Sure. See what feels tight as well, see what feels off. So usually I use, uh, we call it like sensory motor stuff, so it's just kind of like feely things. Like, um, for example, you said you feel your lower back, and your hip flexors sometimes light up. Yes. If we yes. can, usually, usually that's a case of the hips dumping forward a little bit in the squat. If we can get you a little bit more hamstring, a little bit more abs in the warm ups, just through like isometrics, basic stuff on the ground, mm. simple mm. stuff where your body is feels safe and is happy to use those right muscles, um, then hopefully we can take those drills, kind of. Uh, take that feeling, take those patterns that we've programmed in here mm -hmm. and then get under the bar and and use them. Like obviously they're not gonna build any strength and we're not using it to build any quarter sign of capacity or performance, but it's just some awareness. It's just in here. So yeah. we can make yeah. you hopefully pattern better under a bar. Um, but yeah, we'll jump, put you under a bar, see how you move, it might feel brilliant and we might not have to do much. Yeah, no, but there's, it's fun. Well, it's a good point that you bring up there because I'm very quad dominant I've had to work on hamstrings, and from feedback in the past, it's been you don't fire your glutes enough or as well, and same with the hamstrings. And I've found even by doing certain movements, even in Pilates of all things, I've gone into squatting the next day, and I'm like, wow, I've never felt my glutes so much. Not because they're fatigued, because they seem to be working there on there. And I'm like, oh, I mean, but I'm surely using my glutes. But it seems like from certain movement patterns or perhaps certain warm ups or whatever it is that we do, it's like, okay, that's gonna give me that, like you said, it might just be an awareness. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, let's jump under the bar. All right, let's do it. Really is this a thicker bar than usual? It's a 25 kilo squat bar. So it's 25 oh, kilos, right. thicker, knurling, obviously from end to end. Um, that's a serious bar, five kilos. Yeah, it's made that well. It's, this is what the best in the, in the world are you. So like when Vlad, uh, the world's best squatter, came over and did pro roll, he squatted 505. <laughs> Uh, I mean, they use, they're right. made to not bend and not flex because if you, well, I'm sure, yeah. you know, when it starts bouncing around, it's not a fun time. Exactly. I mean, yeah, when that, hopefully we can get to that weight. Yeah, I didn't know they uh, used yeah, the 25. I've, unfortunately, I've only got 469 kilos. All right. So, yeah, don't worry, guys. We're doing 500 today, but, yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> Let's just slow it down. Let's just really 
You know how you're talking about before about breaking at the hips and the knees? Yes. It's just like, since you have got heels on and you're doing a high bar and a sort, let's just let's just ever so slightly have the knees break first. And I want you to just sit down in the most upright position you can. Okay. And this isn't a really a great position to produce a lot of power and if you're gonna do a bit of power team competition, I'll be like, eh. But right now I just want to see what you can do. Like okay. how you can move. Sure, sure. So breaking out the knees first and slow yeah, on the way down. Like just, the upright as you possibly can. Get a little bit of a tuck going in the hips as well, I guess. Yeah, yeah, man. You're just passing the towel. Yeah. <laughs> that could, I recently though, I thought I was looking at the squat, I'm like, am I maybe too deep? Well, okay, but the, maybe my, my, I'm losing that neutral spine. Maybe, but too deep is contextual. Correct. I mean, like for you doing bodybuilding, like too deep doesn't really exist as long as you can keep, like you said, as long as you can keep your position. But I don't think it's a, the depth is a problem. Like right? yeah. you do a really good job of the Yeah. Right, let's check that. Cool. So what I, what I want you to try and do without any other drills first, uh, because if you really couldn't control it, then we could use drills to show you like what that feels like. Okay. But I really want to try and just see if, I, th I think you'll be able to just like out cue a couple of these little things. Okay. Because you do get a little bit, you do get a little bit of this and then at the bottom you get a little bit of it rounding under, but it's so minuscule. Like, yeah. It's so like, it's not like, oh wow, like let's stop and do something else because you're gonna hurt your back tight bad. Okay, yeah. Not in the slightest, but it might cause, like you said, a little bit of tightness, a little bit of hip flexors being angry, a little bit of knees being angry. So it's worth maybe trying to deal with. For sure. Um, so what I'm gonna get you to try and do is just, we'll do, we'll do just the goblet squat even. Yep. So let's just grab this. Let's, let's hold it out in front and I want you to force Pull your elbows forward, spread those caps apart. Yeah, not this. I don't want... Okay. I want you to like protract. <laughs> yeah, just so slightly. And then tuck just the littlest bit. And then I want you to just do the same thing as what we just did before, as in like knees, knees first. forward. Just drop down like you're in an elevator, just keeping this spine super up and down for me. Yeah. And then as you come out of the bottom, don't... Don't worry about going fast. Don't worry about anything. Just worry about just holding that position. Okay, so slow it down on the way up. Yeah, slow it down a little bit. Right, for now, for now. For now. Just, yeah, and back down. Just hold that. Yeah, Tension. Let's just, let's just tuck, just tuck that little bit. Like, like you try to use your hamstring to pull yourself under. There you go, that's better. That one was better, that one was good, that's what you're going for. That was a good cue. I was like, pull the hamstrings under. Yeah, that's it. That's quite challenging for me, actually. Well, now it should be all quite, it should be really. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, no, that's good, that, that was a difference. Let's, um... It was like trying to, for me, I was imagining, like you said, trying to flip the hips forward and pull the hamstrings almost like down and towards the knees. Yeah. Man, it sounds silly, but that's no, what that's, I'm yeah, that's it. That's what we're trying to do. The hamstrings should control pelvis position. Right, I'm with you. Makes sense. You know what I mean? Well, everything should in a way. Correct. You know what I mean, like they're the things that we want right now. Yeah. Um, so we, if we can try and do that under a bar, I don't expect it to. I the thing I don't want you to go through your head is like that's how you want to. Like yeah, that's limit, not the holy grail. Limit force production if, if you're just sitting there, you're like trying to be super upright and stuff. But um, I just want to give you like the feeling of what that feels like to stay stacked. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So let's jump under the bar and see if you can just apply that. Same without thing. Any, without any other intervention. Just because like I said, I feel like you're, you know what you're doing. You know how to control. It's, you move really well. So hopefully it's just a matter of just like, just thinking slightly different. For sure, for sure. Mate, I, I'm a humble student. I'm willing to learn. And there is always more. Let's get that little bit of a tuck, a little bit of hamstring. 
よかったな Control, control, control. And up. Looks good. Last one. I'll chuck some weight on. So I have a feeling that uh, for you, with a little bit of weight's going to help you. Yep, the bar, yes. Just while you have a break, let's just do a couple of little drills. Yeah. Just to show you like what I would maybe do for somebody else. A roller bridge. So what I'm going to get you to do is left foot on the roller. Yeah. Feet out as far as you'll know how far. Okay. Like, the further you go, out, the harder it's going to be. I just want you to tuck ever so slightly. So I don't kind of. <laughs> <laughs> the dogs are doing a job. They're doing a job. Belt buckle up. Yeah. So just like kind of lifting your tailbone. I want you to glute bridge. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. not a hip extension. It's just a little tuck. Just to make it neutral. You should already have hamstrings at this point. Yes. A little bit. And then we're just going to hold there for a bit. That shouldn't be too hard for a guy like you, I imagine. Mm -hmm. And then all we're going to do is lift one foot off. Right. And then we're just going to hold an isometric hold there for 30, 45 seconds, hopefully. Yes. Each leg. Yes. But it's just much harder than you think. Yeah. Maybe it's one of those. Hopefully a lot of hamstrings, a lot of calves. And then if we add some breathing stuff in, we'll get a lot of abs as well. Sounds good, sounds good. Now it makes sense. <coughs> yeah, that's a nice, nice position. Just get that little, little bit of a tuck going first. So it shouldn't be much, it should get a little bit of hamstring going already. Yep. A little bit of calf going already. Yep, 100%. Yep, and then just, just without losing your hips, as in like letting your hips tuck and move around, it's, yeah, awesome. So we're... That is an amazing amount of calf. I imagine, and, and we hamstrings. We could increase more calf if we wanted to by... Oh, going more. And just putting it more towards the forefoot and kind of like flexing, like you're trying to crush that roller. Oh, I see. Oh, yes. Yeah, so and a lot of... Hamstring to support the knee. Great for knee problems. Great drill for knee problems. Um, but we're giving you a calf, we're giving you a hamstring. Let's reach up to the roof and try and protract those scaps out. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, nice. We do it already. So those ribs have dropped down. I just want you to exhale five, ten seconds, really slow, like get it all out. Get those ribs drop down. Drop them down. Down, 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 down. Keep going, keep going. All the way out, all the way out. If you need to crunch more, just keep breathing. That'll be On this one, when you get to that end of that exhale, pause for a second. And when you inhale, don't let these ribs come up. Just go really slow in. As soon as you start to lose your abs, go out again. So you should be getting a lot of abs now, yeah? Oh, yeah. You're, much, you're pretty good at it. How's your hamstring on? It's, fire, it's on fire. Yeah. Close to cramping. It's much harder than it looks, that's for sure. And it's just swap legs. Very challenging. It's really key that you go slow breathing. If you, if you gas back in, like, which is what your natural... You want to do that. The reaction. There's no way, you're like, hey. But... Uh, if, if you gasp, you're going to lose all that, all the abs and all the things that we've worked so hard to create in order to get. That makes sense. It's interesting. Oh, it's so hard. The hamstring is absolutely on fire. This should be enough stimulus for you. I, I, have, I have a feeling. So we could ramp this up. We could use other drills. Um, <laughs> relax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> Still uh, keep the shoes off. Well, you can chuck them back on. Like if you're good, you're good squatting with them. Yep. Uh, also, quick question. Because they're starting to wear, is that a problem to the point where you need a new one? Because I don't really know when to replace them. Is that, is that a thing? I don't think it's a big deal. It's fine. I'll worry about it. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, you know, they'll last you forever in a day. But then I'm like, hmm. I was looking at them the other day and I was just like, around, well, no, I don't, no, I don't, no, I don't. <laughs> what do you mean? I go out on the weekend, it gives me an extra couple of inches in the right places. <laughs> you get the wrong way off the big heel. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, the reason I went for these is because Yuri let me try his on. And uh, I, I was going to say, I didn't, yeah, I didn't need the, because I was like, oh, I'll get the this. And he's like, you don't need it. Just get this one. 
Yeah, and it's more, I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I imagine that's for either someone with a really poor ankle mobility or Olympic lifting. But yeah, exactly right. It's for Olympic lifting for the most part. Because, I mean, I see people just using them anyway. Like, they're just like, oh, I got these. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to shoot your balloon down, but you don't really I feel need like them. most people that use heels probably don't need heels. I don't think they're, the, they're necessarily a bad thing, uh, but they... They're not necessary. No, for, for sure. Most people. Yeah, I sort of generally tell my clients to, to not get them unless they want to, well, depending on their needs, but also if they want to go down that road, like, oh, we'll start with, obviously, no knee sleeves, no belt, no nothing. Teach people to use their body first. And then depending if they want to go down that road, okay, you want to invest in some knee sleeves and a belt, then, you know, maybe, yeah, sure. Because otherwise you're just masking a problem. Or you got all the gear and no idea. That's not what we want. <laughs> That's not what we want. Let's jump onto this squat. <clears throat> so it's 65 now, still nothing. Cool. And are we doing the same technique as before? Staying hopefully, slightly hopefully upright? You don't have to think about it as much as you go along. Ah, uh, okay. But yeah. It's weird having the bar so thick. <laughs> Takes a bit to get used to. Yeah, yeah. It's cool though. It seems to position better. It just stays there a little bit more. Nice. So get those hips in position and then you brace in that. It's nice, slow, get that, get that area slow. Like remember, don't flare those ribs out. Same things on the ground. That's nice. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. I'm not uh, certain, but it looked like his stance was a touch closer than usually. Yeah, possibly. I, I feel like, um, so am I meant to, should I be breaking knees first then? With I usually this? start knees, hips, same time. Ah, okay. It's just if somebody... Yeah, I seem uh, to be going hips more first, yeah. I, I usually wouldn't recommend that, especially for a person that gets a bit of this issue with losing the hips forward, right? Doing this bit of like creating this little bit of an arch, yes, just because by cueing hips first, like it just kind of makes them over accentuates almost, it almost. It's like tell, it's, they get they just do it. It's not a bad cue for a person if you can hold here and, and go back and down. I'm all awesome. yeah, but just like those people that tend to do this, I'll just stay away from that cue because it's just like it's probably just gonna drive the same problem. Well, that's that's important because I just found it is counterintuitive when you're teaching someone you go, I want you to break out the hips, but they're like, oh, but you just told me you want me to keep the hips tucked. But I'm like, right, so it's like, how do you teach someone to keep the hips tucked and then break? You know what I mean? Like when yeah. it comes to deadlifting and stuff like that. I'm usually a both at the same time sort of guy unless you unless I want to push you in one or other direction. Correct, yeah. That yeah. makes sense. That's good. Cool. So one thing that you did last set that when I said it, it made a bit of difference. Again, not a huge amount, but um, subtleties. Was just when you breathe in to take your breaks, stuff you just a couple reps there, you just like really get yeah. this going, yeah. flaring these out, yeah. almost like you would on a bench. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, but we just you just don't want to do that because it changes the positioning, the axial like skeleton thing with the, the rib cage. Yeah. As soon as you flare here, you're gonna. You know, extend through the back and it's just not what we want. We want. This is as good. As soon as this, as soon as this tilts up, these tilt forward. They go, they go together. Yeah. As soon as you're around, when you're around here, these tuck. They, yeah, they chest up, together. shoulders back, and then the back naturally arches, the, 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 the hips flip. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be here. Okay. That makes sense. These should be, that's what I mean about like get position, brace in that position. Like get in a good position. Doesn't need to be like a big, you know, you're trying to get in. Yeah, like, it's not Mr. Miyagi. You don't need to get in all the air. You, <laughs> you just need Some enough air to, to brace. Yes. So it's just nice and slow. Take your time. And we're gone. Sounds good. Yeah. Makes sense. Cool. Makes sense. Um, how many reps? Whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> Three or four. Sounds good. Well, let's try <laughs> touch wider. I feel like you were bit too narrow yeah no i'm pleased I by all means because well no good because i've played around with the wits a lot so please give me your hip critique width. Stick with hip width. yeah 
Yeah, touch out. Yeah, touch the toe out. Right. Fight that, fight that, uh, that urge to do the little drop at the bottom. Same, same tempo, same control from when your first break to right down the middle. Hold it, hold it the whole way. Yeah. Add a, if you have to add a little bit of a tempo to it, do it. see those little tendencies kick out a bit more. Yes, definitely. Do you feel it? Yeah, it was it? harder to hold those positioning yeah, and those yeah, cues. Yeah. yeah, so we might do just a couple of sets here just to, to work on it, because you were getting it right on, on uh, well, at least one of the reps. Yes. So the, the other one was a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, 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 like this and that, then trying to correct and stuff like that. Like it wasn't smooth. So yes. I just want to do a couple more because I know you can do it. Yeah. I, I know you can. I know you can get it right. It's just I think I think if we just do one or two more sets, we'll, uh, we'll make it a bit smoother. For sure. Well, I guess it's trying to uh, undo uh, or the the norm. The norm is to go back into that pattern, yeah. and now it's no, no, no. It's a different cue. It's a different so pattern. You have to really fight that tendency to, to like, it's like your, your start control, good and good and good, and then you want to like, yeah, bounce. Yeah, yeah. Fight it. Yeah. As best you can, yeah. you know. So train. just come to a dead stop. Well, it's just the same tempo all the way down. Ah, yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it doesn't change. It doesn't uh, accelerate at the bottom. And then... That little bit of a bounce, I feel like a lot of people do it because they feel like it's... Uh, they get a bit of power out of it. Correct. Which you do. You get a little bit of a, you get a bounce. You get a spring, right? Yeah. But like, uh, more power is nothing if you're losing position. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you have ten percent more power, it doesn't matter if you're losing ten percent of that force production to, to because because things aren't aligned to to transfer that force. Yes. You know what I mean? That like, makes sense. Positions everything. That's why you'll see powerlifters like that are squatting 400, 500 kilos, like taking it really slow and just holding position. Yeah, and well, like, I watch a powerlifters a lot. I, I don't obviously take it for gospel, but I try and look and I see patterns. Like obviously Yuri's one of my go-tos, um, just because his form is fucking phenomenal. And just, I'm like, what, 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 how was that 270? <laughs> you know, but obviously that is from like the bar all the way up, yeah. Correct. Especially, uh, like your goal is bodybuilding, your goal is hypertrophy. Correct. You don't need to do like more weight. Mm. It's all about stimulating muscle for you. Uh, just and trust me, you get stronger. You will. Exactly. Yeah. Add, 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 Strength add. is a skill. If, if you have to count in your head, if you go three, four second, like count it out, whatever, whatever it is, whatever, okay. whatever helps you hold a consistent speed that you can control, do it. No, that makes sense. And we might even add some pause work in. Uh, I feel like well, programming perspective. What I've been doing as well, for, for so people at home can kind of get an idea, um, is that I will generally squat twice a week at this point in time. I'll have a hyper, hypertrophy day and a strength day. Mm. But on the strength day, I'm trying to add a little bit more of a pause. Mm. I know you'd usually do it on a power day, but I'm sort of having a little bit more. Obviously, there's less reps. The intensity is a little bit higher. And then on my bench, I'm doing three days. My uh, deadlift I'm only doing one because it's my generally my strongest lift and mm -hmm. obviously the neuro fatigue so that's kind of how I'm programming at the minute because I obviously want to get better at squats want to practice a little bit more often yeah. and have you know obviously not forget about okay cool you need hypertrophy and I'm just sort of doing three three of eight three of seven three of six each week and then three of five six three of five three of four for the strength but only doing three sets I find if I do too much more than that I lose my ability to then put volume in on the other accessory lifts. And again, like you said, my goal is size, but obviously there is a relationship there and I have to find that balance. Because in the past I've gone too much powerlifting and it's took a coach to go, hey man, like 
what are you doing? Like, yeah. this is why you can't get the volume in because you just you you pretty much train like a powerlifter now. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. what do you want? You know. Well, if you're doing three three times frequency for squatting and benching. Yeah, two for the squat, still, what, uh, three for the bench. Still more than what I do. Oh wow, okay. <laughs> I only really squat once or twice a week. Yeah. There's, there's more reasons to that, but um, it's just how it is. And then I'll deadlift once a week, mm. and then I'll bench two or three times a week depending mm. on the phase. Mm. So. You don't need high frequency. Mm. Like you don't need to, like, I'm not saying it's bad either, but yeah, it's, like, sure, it's sure. like you don't need it. Yeah. Especially for you. Like, I think, I think twice a week you'd get away with. Yeah. Well, to be fair, I was doing twice a week um, just before I had two weeks off for minor surgery, another YouTube video. But after that, because I wanted to regain my strength a bit faster, I've sort of put in a block where I'm benching three a week just to kind of. Yeah recover the re recover the lost ground a bit faster that's why okay. um but perhaps again like you said it's not necessary yeah uh, we'll have a look. we'll jump back under this we'll give it a couple more sets sounds good all right uh, same again <clears throat> but yeah. better Big brace Okay, that is, I'll be honest, uh, you go out the door. That's, I, yeah, that is gonna, it, everything's feeling harder because I've changed things. Because you've slowed down and now you control it. Like, exactly. I'm sure you can bounce through reps and-, and Correct, but I don't, I, I, but like you said, I don't want that. I'd rather, like I've done many times, take the weight off yeah. and learn how to do it properly. Yeah. So- On the hypertrophy side of things, on the strength side of things, uh, skill development side of things, you get a benefit from it. Yeah, exactly, 100%. And you'll be back at the weights you were using in weeks. Like, I guarantee you, yeah, it's going no. to be a six months transition. 100%. Thing. And I, I got to practice what I preach. I'm all about this. You know, it's like definitely, by all means, take two, two steps back, or as I say, a bit of a side step to be able to go forward with the quality. Do you know what I mean? Otherwise, it's like you said, you got to think, well, if you're just moving weight, but you're not actually achieving the goal, kind of defeats the purpose. I'm a big believer of that, uh, so I've got to lead by example and uh, hold my hands up there. And if you find, if you find that your low bar, high bar back squat is being limited by your technique, as in like you just, you find that you can't get to two, three reps from failure without it falling apart, maybe it's a sign, hey, let's just uh, do what I said and just like do it a skill day on back squats yes and then let's do safety bar or front squats or another close variation of squats but something that you can hold technique on that you can push close to failure so like a hack squat or something or a leg press yeah variant. whatever yeah you can whatever it is whatever, whatever that's a yeah yeah whatever then, you've got and then you can use that as your upper for movement whilst you kind of build this up alongside it you know okay I mean? like this is good i'm starting this, this I'm start versus about a this. front squat or a hack squat or however far you want to go back isn't really a big deal for you yeah it's like still like they're all going to grow your quads yeah like, could argue even better but um correct yeah but i know that you want to do this yeah yeah i enjoy I know it that you just said you enjoy it so like maybe maybe yeah just doing it as a skill movement on a different day a few reps from failure that's it but yeah. i purely ultimately at the end of the day i enjoy doing these movements and to be able to do them pain-free to be able to do them um, progressively and enjoyably is is the goal uh, obviously in alignment to for me you know gaining size but obviously strength is relative yep. oh yeah man here's the high high-end clips oh mate these are these are top end exclusive just come in from sweden haven't they <laughs> these are the new ergonomic <coughs> state of the art sweden, sweden, bunnings. sweden bunnings that's it guys so uh, if you want to get yours pre-order now <laughs> all right Racing that position nice and slow. Just slowly on the Nice.
Yeah, no, that was challenging. I feel a lot more quad activation. Yeah. The, um, the spine, uh, the lower back feels better. There's nothing, there's no pulling at all. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely very different to me at this point. It feels very different. Yeah, feel really fast. For sure. Like I said, it's going to be a week's thing. It's not going to be a month's thing. Yeah. You can just do it. Yeah. Consistently. The biggest tip for, you, for yourself that I think is going to make a difference, and you probably already do this, but for everyone else as well, just honestly just film all your stuff. Correct, yes. So if you're filming this, sign for on. your particular thing, for your, from your sign on, on your warm ups, on everything, and then just like if you're doing 60, 70 kilos, whatever your first kind of warm up is, yeah. and you see, see that you're doing this stuff, then it's going to be like, okay, well, I'm just going to do that and get that right and then move up, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. More of an awareness to you. That's my that's that's what you want. That feels like a like a half squat to me. Because I've been pressed to been going so deep. That's actually, I'll be honest, I will. We film that from the side, you're going well wow. deep enough. You'll, so that, you'll get several white lights. Yeah, <laughs> see that's probably okay, so that's no that's good, that's really good then because I need to I'd sort that out because I feel that's harder because I'm not going to that full depth, but maybe that's, it, that's in my head because yeah. it feels like I'm resisting yeah. at a point where I'm not used to. But again, perhaps that's again just creating those new newer pathways. You'll be stronger like that. You'll yeah. Be like, no doubt at all, you'll be stronger like that. Another thing that's probably well limiting. Yeah. As I was squatting with a, a friend who's quite, he's good at squatting and he said, hmm. He's like, I do think you're going a bit deep there, mate. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, it's really deep, dude. Yeah. And I was like, oh, maybe he's right. Yeah. So, um, no, that's that's good to kind of yeah, highlight that. Yeah, you ready to catch that. a snatch at the bottom of that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the Olympic lifted isn't the goal. No, that's feeling good. That's better. And again, that's going to take some practice, but I'm excited to put it into practice Film it. and yeah, progress it. Film it. Film it from the side. Mate, bit. every time. If you time. get rounding under at the bottom, you've gone too far. Yeah, well, correct, exactly. Right, it's the butt wink or whatever. It's that, that neutral spine. No, that's good. No, I'm enjoying that. That makes sense. Very good. I, I think that's it, man. You've been very generous with your time. I appreciate it. That's all good. The main, and the main thing, and again, because obviously you get to a point where you start to, you lose it. You've only got so much mental capacity, right? And for me, selfishly, I wanted to go through and break down, you know, my squat, my deadlift, my bench press, see perhaps where the gaps were, learn some different perspectives, learn some cues. Again, being aware of things I'm not aware of and mm -hmm. then obviously being able to share it with other people not saying that everyone's having the same issues but then people can start to perhaps reframe and have a look and take something away take some value and and be like okay well perhaps I can implement this or perhaps I can set it up like that or perhaps maybe I need to go and video it you know yeah and things like that so no I really appreciate it and is there anything else that you want to mention we covered a lot we we did. Did. and that was good and for, for, for everyone who stuck around i appreciate it but before we go for people who want to and obviously guys i'll put all the links in the description below find more about yourself once again or they want some coaching from you if they're in the area or they want to do some online where's the best place to to go man and and touch base uh, instagram's easiest at wcroz at wcroz or just search william crozier uh on Instagram or our brand nexusperformance.aus on Instagram. Either of those will get you in the right direction and then through the links, through the link trees and, and the power of the intent, you'll find everything else that you need to. That's it, man. That's it. Oh, for sure. <laughs> or we're on the Gold Coast and you can come see me. That's it. And, and, and at the uh, an amazing, what I say, home gym that we got here. Great music, great tunes. <laughs> World class equipment. Will, we'll thank dub, you very much for your time, music. man. I really appreciate it, man. It's good. I'm sure we can talk about this for a, for a lot longer. Yeah. But, um, yeah, uh, as Will said, you know, make sure you, you head over, give him some support, follow along, and uh, obviously follow those links if you want to learn and engage more. And of course, if you like the video, remember to like the video, I've got to say it. <laughs> Comment if you've got something positive to say or ask a question. Do you want to see more of this? If you've got a question for Will, head over, ask him, all right? Um, share it around, of course, and subscribe for more videos. And until the next time, of course, as always, stay fearless. I'll catch you in the next video. <laughs> well, you gotta, you gotta say, like, comment, subscribe. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. You do.